Okay, so first let me discuss how hydrogen peroxide works. So hydrogen peroxide has the molecular formula H2O2, and its structure looks like this. So there's two oxygens and two hydrogens. And what happens to hydrogen peroxide is this bond here, right there, is very vulnerable to breaking. So when this guy breaks apart right here, it becomes a hydroxyl radical. So basically it's oxygen and hydrogen and a free electron that used to form the bond. And what this free electron does, because it is a radical, that means there's an unpaired electron here. Now electrons, when they're in pairs, when there's two together, they are stable and they're happy. But when they're unpaired like this, they are very unstable, very unhappy. And what they want to do is they want to get another electron from somewhere. And that somewhere can be anywhere. So let's say there's this complex organic molecule of a bacteria nearby. Let's say this is a cell wall of a bacteria. And when this guy approaches, they see these nice and juicy bonds here. These juicy bonds with electrons. So this guy will attack these bonds. These guys will attack and break apart these bonds. So they will destroy organic compounds by reacting with it in such a manner. So it forms radicals that attack organic molecules by destroying their bonds. And afterwards, when they're done reacting and they're done stealing electrons, they can break down, they can become part of the organic molecule, or they can break down to oxygen or water, H2O or O2. So you can see H2O2, when it's done reacting, it becomes oxygen or H2O, or it becomes incorporated into the molecule itself. So basically, it does not leave any residual toxins that you have to remove. Once it's done, it just becomes water and oxygen. So that is a benefit to H2O2. And you might be asking, why is H2O2 more harmful to algae than other organisms in the tank? So basically, that has to do with a couple of factors. So as I discussed, H2O2 burns stuff by direct contact. It forms a radical. That radical goes along, it meets something organic, and it destroys it. So basically for a large organism, large complex organism like plants or fish, because it reacts to the surface, it's just going to burn off the surface layer. It's just going to react with the surface. It's not going to be able to penetrate very deep. So the plant won't be affected that much. Whereas for algae or bacteria, all these small and simpler organisms, the surface is pretty much all they have. So once this is all burned off, they're dead. Same story for the bacteria. Plus, another thing is that um, any organism that uses oxygen to breathe, oxygen is O2, and O2 can also form a free radical. It's just that H2O2 forms a free radical more easily. So because um, using O2 means, as a byproduct, you get an, uh, oxygen radicals. And that means that you have to deal with this somehow. And that is where antioxidants come in. So I'm pretty sure you heard of antioxidants somewhere. So that's what they do. Any organism that breathes oxygen to use, they have some sort of antioxidant to combat um, oxygen radicals. And these antioxidants can also neutralize the hydroxyl radical of the H2O2. And complex organisms like plants and fish and whatever tend to have more of these antioxidants to combat that um, oxidative stress. So basically, H2O2 is more toxic towards simpler and smaller organisms, and that is why.